we haven't been honest with ourselves in the last 73 years and we are not being honest now. Pakistan is in a state of confusion because it was born in a state of confusion. The basis of Pakistan, as articulated by Muhammad Ali Jinnah, was that there are only two nations that live on this subcontinent. They are mutually hostile. They cannot ever live in peace. That was part one. Part two was that Muslims form a nation. Well, the first is given Narendra Modi's ascent to power, something that we can talk about, that hostility exists between religions and between Hinduism and Islam, there was a particular kind of hostility. So we can talk about that, but the second part is completely nonsensical. If Muslims formed a nation which could live at peace with every part of that nation, we would not have Bangladesh. So, Najmuddin Sheikh Saab, you said you didn't want to address Bangladesh. I want to address it because that is not allowed in our official narrative. All we hear is that it was, it was conspiracies. And there couldn't be a bigger nonsense than that. We mistreated the Bengalis. We thought of them as lesser people. We exploited them. And then we massacred them. Why don't we talk about that? Now, if Muslims could always live in peace together, you would not have the separatist movement in Balochistan, which again, nobody is allowed to mention. You would not have the... You would not have Manzur Pashtin arrested and all the PTM leadership arrested today and all those who go to their rescue also arrested as they were two days ago. <laughs> this establishment is terrified, terrified that there is more than one kind of Muslim in Pakistan. This establishment cannot live with diversity. Now, all this goes back to the idea that somehow if Hindus and Muslims could be separated, then there would be nirvana, there would be utopia. Mr. Jinnah, who we all hold in such great regard, is the founder of Pakistan, but he never was able to put down what that Pakistan was to be. He never wrote a single research paper he never wrote an essay. He gave a lot of speeches which at different times said very different things. And so yes, the audience here will applaud what he said on the 11th of August 1947. But do they want to hear what he said in the frontier where he said, you are Muslims first and Indians second. And this was before Pakistan was formed. In 1948, here in Karachi, at, addressing the Bar Council, he said, this will be a land where Islamic law will be applied. He didn't have an idea of Pakistan. I'm sorry, although many of you believe that he did, he did not. In 1945, when he was asked by Maulana Madani, what will Pakistan be? He said, don't worry about that now. We have plenty of time. When we achieve Pakistan, we'll see what it's going to be. So there was nothing about how you would get rid of Jagirdari. There was absolutely no mention at all. Would Pakistan be a federation or a confederation? Nothing on that. How would Pakistan survive in a world where science and technology is what makes countries strong? He had no plans for that. And so Pakistan was born in a state of confusion. 
And that confusion should have ended in 1971 when the two-nation theory went into the Bay of Bengal. It should have gotten, we should have gotten rid of the two-nation theory then. It makes absolutely no sense today. It is nonsense today. So I can be arrested for that. Yes? So those in the... What we need is a Pakistan that is built upon common interests of the people, of the people of Pakistan, which must include the Baloch, the Sindhis, the Pathans, the Punjabis, the Gilgitis, Baltistanis, everyone. This is not a country that was made for the armed forces of Pakistan. This is a country that was made for its people. Unless we get around to that basic truth, all this is neither here or there. Today, we do not need an ideology for Pakistan. Countries survive without ideologies. Holland has no ideology, nor does Japan. And look at Bangladesh, who were our poor cousins. They're doing so much better than we are. Their foreign exchange reserves are four times ours. Their quality of life index is so much better. Why? Because they don't have an ideology, and we do. Howard, thank you for that wonderful documentary you made. It you. showed, it's, it's a potpourri. It shows all the confusions, all the issues that confront us today. And we must find our way out of that morass. And the way out is by becoming a normal country. You see, normal countries don't have ideologies. Normal countries simply work for the benefit of their citizens. And those countries not just survive, they thrive. We should thrive. Thank you. Wow.